Hey, what's up, y'all? How you doing? Uh, let's talk about the distributive property. But let's go back and kind of look at what we did before on it. Uh, and again, uh, this is a rule in algebra. Once something works, you stick with it. It keeps working. It doesn't matter what the new stuff looks like. If a method works, it's like going, you hoe a, you know, a row of, you know, what do homeschoolers raise in their gardens? Goats. You hoe a row of goats and you got one row of goats, you hoe that and they look good. Fine, stick, them, stick them seeds in the ground and then we'll do it, okay? Just because you have 10 rows to hoe doesn't mean you do it any differently. If it works the first time really well, keep doing it, you'll just do it a little bit more, all right? Let's go back to this one. How do you do this? You distribute the six, you go six times eight is 48, done. You go six times negative five, negative 30, then the answer is 18. Of course, we already knew the answer was 18 because eight minus five is three, and six times three is 18, right? Okay, if you have a four X and you distribute that, you will do one at a time. Four X times A turns out to be that. Four X times five B, well four times five is 20. X times B is X B, boom, you're done. We know how to do those, right? Let's look at this one. Pause and copy. And we do exactly the same thing. We're just gonna take that X Y and multiply it by Y squared, then we're finished with that part. Then we multiply it by negative x squared z, and we're done with that part. So let's do it. So x, y times y squared. Well, there's nothing you can write that goes along with the x, so you just put your x, just copy it. This is, remember, if you don't see a number here, a y is just y to the first. So y to the first times y to the second, remember you add those, that'll be y to the third. Done with that part. Now we have a positive times a negative, which is a negative. Now we have x to the first, times x to the second is x to the third. And there's a y, nothing really to go with, you just copy down your y, and the z, copy down your z, you're done. That's all you need to do. No solving the equation, no nothing, you're just distributing. Let's try another one. Pause and copy. All right, let's do the four x y cubed for this one first. Well, this is, you know, if there's any, not a number there, you assume it's a one. So four times a one will be four. X to the first times X to the fourth is X to the fifth. Y to the third times Y to the first is Y to the fourth. You are done. A positive now times a negative is a negative. Four times five is 20. And we have X to the first times X to the first is X to the second. There's nothing to for the y to the third to go along with, so you just stick it there at the very end as it is, and you're done. That's all there is to it. Remember, these are if you, when you look at these in your book and you see like a whole page of practice problems or you know your your, your you know problem set, it look, can look intimidating. Remember, these this is just an addition problem. Do you know how to do one plus four is five? Can you do three plus one is four? That's all you're doing, just adding and subtracting. Couple other little things to remember, but you know, no big deal. Okay, this one is a little different. What looks different about it? Yeah, that, that thing is hanging on the end there. And if you don't like that, I hate these things personally. I always go, the heck with this, I'm putting this back in the beginning. 2x squared y, I like it there better. And I'm done. I'm gonna do mine that way. So let's do it and do that together. All right, 2 times 1 is 2. x squared and Nothing else to hang that with, so just x squared. Uh, y times a y, I mean, the a you can just put there once. There's nothing else to smash that in there with either. Y to the first times y to the first is y to the second, and that is it. You're done. All right, this is a positive. That's a negative. We multiply those, we get a negative. 2 times 4 is 8. x squared, there's nothing to, you know, put this with, so you just put x squared. Y to the first times Y to the fifth is Y to the sixth. There you go. That's all there is to it. That's distributing. Another one. Ooh, there's three terms in the parentheses. Who cares? It's like another row of goats to herd. I mean, to hoe. What do you do to goats? You herd them? Anyway, plant your goat trees the same way you would. It doesn't matter if there's three rows of them you're planting. All right? Do the same thing. Let's take care of this first. 8 times 5 is 40. m squared times m to the third is m to the fifth. x to the first times x to the first is x to the second. Done. A 
positive times a negative will be a negative. 8 times 3, 24. m squared, nothing to go along with it, so you just stick it right there. x to the first times x to the fifth is x to the sixth. You got it. Done. Let's work on this one last. 8 times 2, 82. No, 16. Okay. m squared, nothing to go along with it. m squared. X times X, well that's X to the 1 times X to the 1 is X to the 2, or X to the 1st times X to the 1st is X squared. Boom, there we go. And that's all there is to it. By the way, do you recognize, look at 40, 24, and 16. You recognize that the largest number that will divide evenly into 40, 24, and 16 is 8, correct? Okay, so eventually they're going to give you this, this expression, excuse me, in blue. And they will say, not expand, they'll say factor. And they'll, in other words, they're asking you to pull out the biggest numbers in all three and then to pull out the biggest uh, of each one of those variables. And we'll do that later on after we've done this for a while. Okay. Um, by the way, we did this before last uh, time or two, um, solving decimal equations. And I taught you guys to do this, which was basically to... Just go ahead and move the decimals over the same number of times for each term to, you know, find the worst one that needs the most moving to turn it into an integer and then do it that many times and then copy everything else does it two times as well. In other words, you'd look at this and go, okay, this needs to be moved over twice. So that turns into 2m. Well, if I move that over twice, I'll have to move this over twice as well. Put a zero, that's 460. And this would be and with a zero. So I got a 40 plus 2m equals 460. We've done that before, right? Okay. Uh, that's the actually the newer method. The old method is this, which I didn't show you. Um, forget the, what, the method we just did a minute ago. You could go right ahead and solve. In other words, let's, let's look at this first. Let's say, let's say I had 7 plus 3x equals 11 or something like that. Well, you can solve this equation. What's the first thing you do to solve this equation? You're going to subtract 7, right? So negative 7 here, and then negative 7 here, and, whoosh, and then we have a 3x, and then 11 minus 7 is 4. Then we go, oh, divide by 3, divide by 3, and x is equal to 4 over 3. You got your answer, right? Do you see how this equation here looks like this equation here? It's the same thing. You've got some constant plus some variable, constant plus some variable, equals some other constant, equals some other constant. The, the thing that looks kind of with this is that they're decimals, right? Well, it doesn't matter. You know how to do decimals, right? I mean, you know how to work with decimals. You've done these for, if somebody said to you, oh, add 0.07 plus uh, 2.3, you would go, oh yeah, okay, 2.3 plus uh, 0.07, and you know, that's not that big of a deal, right? That's all you're doing here. In fact, you don't have to do that if you don't want to. But let's just go through it, just so you know what the book is talking about. Well, the first thing you would do here is you would say, okay, I'm subtracting 0.4, right? To get rid of this and just have the M left. Well, over here, you're gonna go, okay, fine. I'm subtracting 0.4, all right? You go, whoosh. these are gone, of course. 0.02M is on the left side. Then you'd have 4.6 minus 0 0.4, which would give you 4.2, correct? No big deal so far, right? Okay. Well, look at this. What's the last step? We divide by what? I mean, in other words, when you got this over here, 3x is equal to 4. We went, oh yeah, we divide by 3 because that's the number right there. You're going to also go, okay, yeah, we divide by 0 0.02. You go, okay, divide by 0 0.02. Same thing, right? So you have on the left side m, just like normal. And over here you have this equation, point, not equation, division problem, 0.02 into 4.2. Two, right? Okay. Well, if you were in sixth grade or whatever, and they gave you this problem in your math book, or I don't know, if a stranger came up to you on the street and said, excuse me, young man or young lady, could you solve this for me? And you go, wow, I would be happy to. Mom! And, you know, the police would come and beat the man senseless. Anyway, you go like this. You go over two, right? You go over two again. You'd write a new problem that had two into 420. Then you'd do that, right? That's all you're going to do here. Exactly the same thing. So the point is, there are two ways to do these decimal problems. Either you can do them like this and just, 
you know, subtract the point four and subtract the point four and then turn it into this kind of problem and then move it over and do that division. Or you can just go, you know, move the decimal over however many times you need to on all of them, then do it that way. Just, that's, let's just stick with that way. It's much easier. Okay. Pause and copy this one. And this is different, right? You see what's different about this one? How many times do you have to move the decimal to clear out everything? Three times, right? This goes over three times to make it into 2K. Well, if you do that, you're going to have to move this over three more times. That's going to be a zero. And this is going to go over three times. And that's going to be a zero here. So this is your new equation. Two times K plus one, two, three, 20 equals 4,020, right? In other words, you've done a kind of a funky looking equation with decimals and you've done one thing, you've made it to look like an old thing that you've done 50 times already. Okay. Well, you can do this one, right? What's the first step we need to do here? Subtract the 20. So we're going to subtract the 20. 2K is left. 4,000 is over here. And then the last thing we do is we divide by 2. And everybody knows what 4,000 divided by 2 is. And there you go. Dollar is 2. PCK. Okay. All right. Try A and B. And uh, after you get both of those done, hit... Uh, I'll go ahead and pause it and hit the unpause button. We'll do those together. All right, well, let's take a look at A first, and let's do this times this one first. So X has nothing to go with, so you just do X. Y squared times Y squared is Y to the 2 plus 2, which is 4. P has nothing to go along with, so you just copy it. Boom, done. A positive times a negative is a negative, and there's nothing to really combine here at all. You're just going to copy x, y squared, and p, and that's it. You're done. That's as far as you can go. B, I hate this. It annoys me. Okay, so I'm going to put this 2xy in the front. I don't like it back there. Okay. So let's just go ahead and do 2xy times that. Well, 2 times a 1, basically, is a 2. x times x is x to the first times x to the first, which is x to the second. Same thing for the y times y, and there you go and a minus there, and a 2 times a 1 is a 2. x times an x is an x squared, and y, you just plop it there on the very end, and you're done. All right, go ahead and pause it and try c and d, c and d. All right, we'll move to an exciting new color, black, and we'll take this one first. 3 times a 1 is 3. x has nothing to go with. P to the third times P to the fifth is P to the eighth. Done. A positive times a negative is a negative. That's a one. Three times a one is a three. X times X squared is X to the third. P to the third times P to the eighth is P to the eleventh. Boom, there you go. Okay. Look at B. Let's do this one first. A two times a one is a two. X squared has nothing to go along with. M squared times M squared is M to the 2 plus 2. Done. All right. A positive times a negative is a negative. 2 times a 4 is an 8. X squared has, again, nothing to go along with, so just X squared. M to the second times M to the first is M to the third. And there we go. That's it. All right. Pause and try the very last one, E. Just kidding. It's not the very last one. It's the next to last one. Move all these decimals over twice. One, two, that's 8x. One, two, that's negative 10. One, two, that's 1,670. There you go. All right, we're going to clean up the negative 10 by adding a 10. Adding a 10. Yoink! 8x is equal to 1,680. Okay? And we're going to have to divide by 8. Divide by 8. This is where you're going to have to sit down and actually do the long division. If you want, you could probably do a little trick if you want to do this. How many times does 8 go into this? Well, we can just do one at a time. 8 into 16 is 2. Done. 8 into 80 is 10. Done. X equals 210. All right. Try F. Go ahead and pause it and try F. And that should do us. All right, this is a piece of cake here. Over once, over once, and over once. So we have 7m 
plus 6m equals 34. Well, 7m plus 6m is 13m. That equals 34. And you divide by 13, and there's your answer. m is equal to 34 divided by 13. Oh, wait a second. That's open right there. Does that bother any of you, anybody out there who's a little OCD? Does that kind of trouble you a little bit? Okay, let's try to get that. Oh, oh, I missed it again. Oh, oh, I mi oh look at here. Oh, uh, okay, let's go ahead and get it there. All right. That feel better? All right. <laughs> Hope you guys had a good day today. See you next time. Have a great day.